readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. <laughs>
I mean, the premise is that his father is killed and betrayed by a Jarl and a king, and he has to kind of assemble uh, this team to take back his kingdom. It's and a tale of vengeance. It is a tale of vengeance. Uh, if you like Batman, the Sigurd <laughs> is vengeance. Um, and it, it's just fantastic. I love listening to the Audible versions of these because Philip Stevens, my personal favourite Audible narrator out there, just captures the whole spirit uh, and the poetic nature of... Charles Christian's writing. I mean, he's dripping with authenticity. Um, you can see the the stark um, similarities between Charles Christian and Robert Lowe, who's also another one of my favourite Viking historical fiction writers. Um, there are just some amazing set pieces. The mythology again is great. The the immersion, as you can see. I mean, what do I love in books? Immersion, authenticity, and characters that you really get behind. So this ticks all three of those boxes, and it's got some. A lot of lopping off of heads. Uh, it's one of so, my favourite trilogies as well. Yeah, it's a superb trilogy. Uh, and Giles Christian is one of my favourite writers and people. So, yeah. I second that as well. And next I have Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. So, in case you don't know, Sally Rooney is the author of Normal People, which has just exploded over the last two years. Uh, but that wasn't her debut. Her debut was Conversation with Friends, which I believe is actually being adapted at the moment. It is, yeah, being made into a TV show this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. so. And yeah. I really enjoyed Conversation with Friends, but um, I think Beautiful World is a step above as mm -hmm. well, as and Normal People is just one of my top 10 books of all time. This again, so it really just has a way of Putting across really flawed characters, but in a way where you you're still rooting for them. They're so awkward. They make me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> but it, it reminds me like of myself. Like, show. It reminds me like, of myself. Yeah, I feel, well. feel a lot better about myself after reading these people. But it's yeah. written so beautifully, where it shows really flawed characters and the situations that they're in. But Sally Rooney doesn't cast judgment. It's up to you. You just get to really just live with these characters, and they just feel so well realised and I think that, uh, no actually I know Sally Rooney, the, Sally Rooney finished this in lockdown um, and so she, uh, there's a part at the end, I won't I won't go too much into it but a bit, a bit about lockdown and the effects of it um, but yeah, Be For World, Where Are You, um, I think the title it kind of talks about It's, it's kind of a so, social commentary really it as is. well, it's following sometimes working class people, mm. te uh, students or th this one, a they're in their late well. 20s aren't they, in, yeah. in Ireland because she is an Irish writer um, and the writing is very stripped back and it's all just all about relationships. So if yeah. you like, you know, you like fantasy or historical fiction, that's about characters interacting with each other. This is all about it. You're in their heads uh, following two friends, two female friends, um, and they, as they email each other and then they associate with other people around yeah. them. And it, it's re we're really well written and it's great fun, isn't it? Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it does tar tug at heartstrings. It does, it's incredible. And I had had a massive reading slump. I hadn't read a physical book for three months and then I read this. And uh, I tried a few other books to read um, and it didn't work, but then I dived into this and it was just so easy to get swept away in the events of this story. And uh, yeah, it made me cry at the end as well. So uh, all ticks for Sally Rooney. And for me, I then read another huge book, which is Empire of the Vampire I think you by need to show that Jay Christoph. Down. There we go. I can't remember how many pages it is. I think it's 800 odd. You something listen to this on yeah, Audible. 700 um, and something. And also physically. You read it physically as well. I was reading physically. And then, do you know what? You start reading this. It's about vampires, as you can tell. Uh, and it made me want to play Skyrim and go vampire hunting. So I would read a few chapters and then I would go on to um, Skyrim. I'd listen to the audible of this ticking over as I played Skyrim, hunting vampires. It was just so cool, so cool. Um, the writing by Jay Kristoff is super, super immersive. It's fantastic. It's, I mean, this book, it feels like Jay Kristoff has sat down and thought, what's the most iconic book I can ever write? And the product is here. Every single line is like, what if you just, were imagining that this person didn't care about anything and everything they say is pretty just awesome you know like you know feel like you're watching like a conan film um where and it hits it, it, it's dripping with just things that are just so cool uh, and you can't help but be sucked into this i mean pardon the pun this is about vampires um but it is it's a lot Good of fun one. as well there there's so much laughs the characters are great the 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 events there's two timelines the events in both of them is just superb and it's so epic if you want epic fantasy check this out 
Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not really a huge fan of of vampire books. I mean, I, I've read Salem's Lot, which I love, but um, if you like kind of vampire films and the lore and the culture and the, and the history behind um, vampirism, like Dracula, then you will love this because I think there's a lot, a lot of nods to that classic vampire literature and that J. Chris have got across. I mean, I, J. Chris is such a great guy. I've seen interviews with him, especially on Mike's book reviews and um, his channel, and they did a great interview. And he seems like such a stellar bloke. Um, you know, I, it's easy to see uh, how he's such a good writer as well because he's got a way of words, which is just superb. So thank you, Jay. Great book. And the next I have is another fantasy book. Uh, this is A Fool's Hope by Mac Mike. Mac? Mike Shackle. Mac Shackle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, a Fool's Hope is the sequel to We Are The Dead, the second book in this series, The Last War. And it is so incredible. I thought, you can't top We Are The Dead. You can't even get close to it, surely. And then Mike Shackle did. Uh, False Hope, we follow the same characters um, almost immediately um, after we leave them at the end of We Are The Dead. And oh, I just love it so much. And it's it's not short. It's not incri It's not like Empire the Vampire tone like. Mm. But it's still quite a longish book. But again, I just swept away. And it was so easy to read. Just a few settings it took. I mean, I was very tired the next day after being up till like 2 a.m. Um, because I just could not stop. I did not have enough discipline. Um, and Mike Shackle, again, he's a really nice guy as well. Um, yeah, talked to him a bit on social media. Oh, he's um, a great guy. And yeah. I watched, Good artist his, too. watched his in, a few interviews of his as well. And it, it falls out. It's just brilliant. And I cannot wait for the finale to be re released, mm. which is called Until the Last, which... Uh, Gives me vibes that it may be quite sad. I um, love the titles as well. Uh, brilliant titles. But yeah. William's really hyping me up for these. I, what I thought is I would, I've got the books, but I would, and I've got one of them on my shelf, haven't I? Um, but I'm waiting for book three to be very close to being out, and then I'm going to dive into or delve, dive and delve actually, aren't dive I? And delve. Uh, into all three of those because it just they sound amazing. It's like it's like when William read Rage of Dragons. That's kind of the hype that he's building up to, which is. Uh, very impressive. I love Rage Dragons and Fires of Vengeance. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And this was actually signed by, um, well, not signed by, but um, got a signed book plate version from The Broken Binding. So that's nice. also pretty snazzy. And the last one for me is Among Thieves by MJ Kuhn. And this is kind of uh, very much like Liza Lachlan Mora, um, Thieves, that kind of tale. Uh, obviously, it's called Among Thieves, so there you go. You might have guessed that one. But <laughs> yeah. it's, I mean, it's really well written. It follows a few different POVs, and they're all interacting with each other. It's kind of a group of misfits that really don't get on with each other. Um, they try and steal something, and uh, it, it's it's so much fun. I mean, I've never read a book that says Pratt so often, uh, and it's really refreshing to read. It's kind of like Blackadder humour in there as well sometimes. The insults are hilarious, and um, without being, uh, you know, too overboard... Um, which is great fun. It's not kind of um, Jabba Crombie level of insults, which, you know, is amazing. Sometimes you, you don't need that all the time, though, do you? Um, but Among Thieves was, it was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a rollicking ride, really. Um, and I'm really glad I picked this up. When I saw MJ Kuhn's um, video discussing her book, and I was just like, I need to read this. It's, it's pretty short, to be honest, and you get through it so quickly because it's MJ Kuhn's got a really nice, easygoing style. But the characters are all very individual. Um, they interact with each other excellently. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you want to pick up a book that's kind of recently released, then um, definitely check this one out because I think it will tick a lot of people's boxes, especially if you like uh, Scott Lynch's Gentleman Bastards series. And this is another one that I need to read. Yes, you that do, William. So many Too to the many. List. And uh, was that the last one for you? For me, yeah. Yeah, now the last one for me, and that is Wolf of Wessex. Great book. Historical fiction by Matthew Harfey. So another this great is basically well. another great guy. Uh, so this is basically Logan, but set in Anglo-Saxon England. It's Logan England. meets True Grit. As in Logan, as in Wolverine, Logan, Grimdark film. Yeah. Um, not Logan Nine Fingers from the Blade itself. Um, because there's a bit of a mystery in this, which I loved in this setting. I've never really read that before. Mm. Um, and it was just so awesome. And it's done so well. It's a standalone, which is also great. I don't think we have enough standalones out there. But as much as I, I love being immersed in a huge, grand series but often i've got so many series ongoing that um mm. sometimes it's nice to just dive that it's kind of a again. palette cleanser as well isn't it, it is isn't it um it's very different very unique and i think it's been very successful as well yeah. um and oh so awesome one of my top reads of last year um and yeah look it's quite short actually but um i love the cover as well i think that might actually be matthew harfey's actual act 
Very nice. I might be wrong. I remember one of his covers has got um, a weapon of his. Uh, so it may be this. Um, uh, if not, I'll I'll talk about what that is in another video. Now, Barnaby um, Edwards narrates this book and he's oh, yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's so easy to read. And it's... Do you know, I was feeling a bit burnt out with um, Dark Ages fiction set in Britain. But this completely just recaptured my love for it. You know, when you read 13 books by Bernard Cornwell back to back... Um, it can take its toll, um, and I was getting a bit. Even though it is brilliant, I'm getting a little bit tired of that of that kind of scenario. But Matthew Harvey just brings you back and reminds you what you love about that time period, and specifically what you love about England in that time period. So yeah, and That's if you're not it. sold, he's got a dog. Matthew Harvey, or, or <laughs> no, no, <laughs> there's a dog, the main an animal yeah. companion in this, yeah. and uh, the dog is pretty awesome. Yeah, so, he's got a great name as well. If I'll nothing else, hooked you, you to come discover. on that must. Yeah. So there we go, that is uh, some of our new favourite books that we haven't had a chance to talk about. This will be part one of a few, uh, we'll have a series of episodes just there. Talking about a few in each one, I like yeah. going a bit more in depth into them, but um, talking about a few, few fewer books. Yeah. Um, that was a tongue twister. But uh, thank you to everyone for watching. I hope some of these intrigued you, um, and at least that if you, hopefully you enjoyed us talking about them. Yeah, if you've got any books that you read recently, then please let us know. We've, we've been a bit out of the loop lately, so... Um, yeah, chuck them in the comments and we'd love to see what books you're recommending. Any books similar to these? Have you read any of these? What did you think of them? Empire of the Vampire, was it as iconic as I believe it was? Let us know in the comments and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you everyone for watching our video. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you very soon on The Brothers Gwyn. Truth and courage, The Brothers Gwyn. Truth and courage.